Okay, so another this weekend, no projects, no fun because everyday life set in again and a fuel pump went out on the, the Chevy. Um, it actually went out in May, which has been six months, but of course I bought the $56 Amazon version and here we are again. It does have a one-year warranty, but the company still hasn't replied about the warranty, so we just bought another one that... Um, my son found for Made in the USA in Illinois. Lots of good reviews, so we'll try that one. And it was only 99 So we're going to put him on. Um, anyway, uh, first thing, I've checked um, all the fuses. Go ahead and pop the hood. So right in here, we have, um, turn it around, you can see the ECMB20 and the fuel pump so relay um, what I did was I just took the one from the horn swapped them out to make sure that was okay and then checked the fuse um, and it was good of course so next thing to do is to um, kind of hear if you see if you hear that whine when you turn on the key so it's lots better if you have a partner and uh, someone can turn it on you can sit down in here by the wheel well and uh, See if you hear anything. And nothing. No little for that couple seconds where it picks up. Anyway, so that's not going. So the next thing to do is to change fuel pump. Um, we're pretty sure that's what it is. It did the same thing. We were driving on the way home from dropping off some stuff and it just kind of ran out of gas and then won't start again. So it did a little putter putter and then just quit. So that's kind of what happened. Um, same thing with that. We will check the wiring. Um, that was another thing. I was doing some research on these pumps and evidently the pigtail that they send with you sometimes, um, it, I guess it's not the right gauge wire and it will short out or melt or whatever. So they said when you get under there to change it out, it could just be the, the plug and not the actual pump. So once we get the bed lifted, we will um, do that. So the next step is to take the bed off. Tools required for changing out the fuel pump. Um, we wouldn't didn't need it, but for the pigtail that comes with your new pump, um, unless you order it, I think all of the new pump, fuel pumps will come with this new uh, pigtail. I think even the OEM ones that are like $300 at AutoZone or whatever um, come with a new pigtail, so you can't avoid that. But you'll need some strippers and whatever uh, your heat shrinkable butt connectors and sealed and then uh, a heat gun for that part we already have changed ours so we don't need this stuff we didn't do it uh, you'll need channel locks a hammer and some kind of bolt punch something to tap that um, uh, lock, ring. lock ring for the fuel pump down um, on and off you'll have to take it off with that uh, you'll need a small screwdriver to pop the, the gas neck uh, rivet clip out uh, 18 millimeter um, socket impact wrench handy if you don't have it um, to make sure you have a little extension because you got to go up in the frame in a couple spots that's for all of your bed bolts and then you'll need a 30 uh, t30 for uh, the two screws on the gas neck as well and I think that's pretty much it that you'll need so um, in the video he'll show you and of course like I said this is for the bed gas neck um, tapping off the ring and then if you need to do the wiring. So first thing uh, you want to do is um, if you have a, you know, this light wire here, I guess it was a, you want to do the white one and the blue one. Uh, these two go to your tail lights, which, you know, they're going to come out with the bed, so you don't have to worry about them. But uh, this one goes to your license plate light, and then this one, of course, goes to everything else up front, I guess, coming from the front. That's the one bringing in the power. So you want to do those, those two there tail lights you can leave in uh, then you've got four bolts uh, they're up in here we already took the bolts out sorry about that um, but anyway there's four you'll just have to look up in here and find them they're on the top member of the the frame uh, so there's one there one there and then there's two in front of the wheel uh, some of them you'll find look for these big holes here where you can get a, a impact in socket in that'll probably be where it's at um, and then both sides once you get all of that off, um, 
that's that's pretty much it for for holding the bed on it's just those four bolts and then make sure you got all the wires um and uh you'll also want to take the tailgate off we'll we'll show you that in just a second when i get back out from underneath there there it is so there's one of the front ones there right in front of the wheel well and then the other one is right up there I can't see that very well. It's on the, the little... Uh, there, Phil can point to it. Yeah, right up in there. Um, you'll see the white part of the bed right there where we took the bolt out. Alright, so to remove the tailgate, what you're going to do is you're going to um, take off these little clips. You lift, lift it. it and then slide up. And then down here, it's the same thing. On one side, you have a, a slot, so you lift it out and you pull it out. And there you go, it's off. Set it off to the side, and there goes a good 50 pounds. Okay, so now that you got the tailgate off, the wire's unhooked, the eight bolts off. Um, if you have a partner and you have room, you probably can just lift it off. It's not that heavy. So, um, it's, you know, weighs a little bit. <laughs> so, if you had three people, four people, it'd be really easy. It'd be easier than a camper shell or whatever. Um, so, but what we're going to do, because our pump isn't actually in yet, uh, we're going to go ahead and just lift it up and then push the truck a little bit forward. That way we have plenty of working room and everything. Or, oh, don't forget about the little gas gauge. Yeah, the, oh, that's right. The, the, the gas thing. And then you can, you know, so take those two out, this one off, and then just kind of push it back to the side, and it'll it'll stay in there. And we'll do that real quick. Yeah, those are a T30. Should come off. Yeah, yeah, it'll just sit in there now and just push it back. That way, when you lift up on the bed and everything, you're good. So with our method, don't get under it because it's too scratch its straps. Um, would love to have a shop hoist, a little chain hoist or something. Uh, then you can just we need to be it done. quick and easy. We'd have been done with the first X try, but with ratchet strap and ratchet strap, there was too much stretching and we couldn't even get it up. But now we've got plenty of room to get in here and work. Um, we didn't like the tilted bed because it, it, you were just cramped. You couldn't get in there. This is... If you had a hoist, would have been just as easy, but, um, you know, it's another purchase we'll have to acquire now that we can prove to the uh, lovely wife that we need something to keep us safe while we're working. Blow it off, clean it off really good right now. That way when you pull the old one out, you don't knock any dirt or anything in there. All right, I'm leaving it to uh, Little Fish here. I gotta go in, do some more stuff. I'll be back out to check on him later, but he'll probably have it done by then. Okay, so you won't see exactly this when you take off your truck bed, but uh, you'll see pretty much the same thing. The only difference is be this pigtail right here that we got on from the last time we changed the fuel pump. And, uh, You'll just have the original connectors, and this won't be here. It'll be the original one. But first step will be getting off your plugs. So on this little one, there's a little clippy up here. Just lift that up. Pull the wire right off. This other one's a little more difficult. There's a little gray thing right up top. 
pull that thing back. Above that, there's a little thing you push down, depress it, and then it'll wiggle off there. There we go. Okay, so there's wiring all done. Now your two outer fuel lines. Okay, this is high pressure, that's return. There may be some residual fuel in this line, so it'll take us a rag or something. Preferably a clean rag, but this one will work. We'll slide it under there, catch some of that fuel under there. So the two outside ones the exact same way. Uh, you you do the exact same thing for unhooking. And uh Okay. There'll be a little plastic thing in there. You squeeze it and you pull it off. Give it a nice good tug. There you go. Some residual feel as you can see. Same with this side. This side won't be as hard because there's not as much pressure. Well, maybe it'll be, but... But, you'll just pull them off there. Okay, then this plug in the middle, you'll need to depress it. And, uh, yeah. So I'll get a pair of pliers real quick. Help me along with this. pair of needle nose pliers. Take here, squeeze the side of it just like that, pull it right off there. Simple as that. Okay, now you got everything disconnected. Get those kind of out of the way. You'll have a little plastic locking thingy. Let's see if you can see this. Okay, yeah, y'all can see it, so let me back around. There's a plastic locking thingy right here. Okay. Take your little pair of pliers. Pull that thing out the way. Now you're good. Now there's two methods of taking the locking ring off. You can use a pair of channel locks. And you just grab right there and squeeze. That's the easy way. Other ways, you can take a hammer and chisel. I'm saying a chisel, but stick it right there and you hammer it in and it'll come off. But I think the channel lock pliers is the easier method. Okay. Save the locking ring. The new pump doesn't come with one of those. Get your lines out of the way a little. There. Here's your tank seal. Your new pump should come with one of those if you get a good one. And just kind of fish it out of there. Okay. There's plenty of fuel everywhere. Let it drain for a second. And you'll have your gas gauge here too that you'll have to uh, kind of get out of there. And just try not to spill as much fuel as you can. But there is a lot in here, so you'll spill some, you know. Definitely you'll spill some. And then just get your pump out of here. Okay. And set it aside. What you're going to do is you're going to get you a little screwdriver like this. And you'll have to get these little clippy thingies off of here. So you're going to stick your screwdriver up in the back, kind of pry it up and off of there. Once you get it on one side, you should just be able to reach around, kind of pry it up, hold it there, pry up on the other side, and there's one. And don't worry about mixing them up because they are different sizes, so only one will fit some, the one place and one the other, so won't have to worry about that. And just don't break these because I don't know where you buy new ones. So, and that's all you've got to do on your old pump. Ain't throw it in the trash because it ain't no good. Okay, so 
So now we're here with our nice new Air Tex pump. The other one we had, cheapo $50 Chinese junk. Lasted us about six months and it was 70 bucks. This is USA made, Air Tex quality. All right, 99, 93 bucks. You can't beat it. This one should last a lot longer. All right, there's a couple things you gotta do before you can put it back in your vehicle. One is you'll have to put these little clippy things we just took off. Slide the small one on the small side, big one on the other side. That's done with. Then you're gonna take your little army thing right here. This little thing, your pressure or your fuel gauge, and you're gonna snap it in here. Just like okay, you're sitting in there, you got it oriented like this. Push it in the hole. Patience with here. Push it in the hole. Push it in. Now you got a gauge. Would you look at that? Alright? Make sure it's good and on there good because you ain't going to be accessing it again. So you don't want to make sure it's nice and on there good. And so now our pump along with the new tank seal. You're ready to go back in the vehicle. Okay, so now you got your pump and you're going to fiddle with your lock ring until you get it on. And we'll keep, we'll keep trying it. You're just going to dry it. Drive it in different ways. It ain't going in. Okay, good, you're here. I can't get this ring on. Save my life. It was really hard last time. Well, it's harder this time. Alright, we're going to hit pause for a minute while we get something to tap that with. Um, probably end up using a flathead screwdriver or um, a little punch. What, I, what I'm looking for is one of those things that you get in the spark plug changer that comes with your lawnmowers. That little piece of metal. Um, that should work pretty good to catch one of those nubs. But Anyway, we'll find that and get that thing uh, tapped on there. Basically, it's going to take two people, probably somebody to hold down and another one to tap. Because that seal that's on the that black seal that he put on there it keeps it kind of raised so you gotta press down while you spin it you know and uh, get it hooked into there so I think if somebody I think where it's getting caught is on this tab here um, those two look like they're coming in this one here I'm able to push down a little further like that you can actually see a little moving a little bit right there so I'm gonna yeah, I bolt the work um, I'm gonna go and hold down on it while he taps Okay, so what I noticed was moving it was as I'm pressing down, I'm trying to spin it. So what you want to look for is make sure that this one tab gets over this little lock here. That way it can't spin back the other direction. Okay, so now you can plug in your lines and it's even easier when they're coming off is just make sure that the gap in the fitting the gap in your fitting is lined up with this little connector piece and it just slides on, you see. Same on this side. The gap, there it is. And then the center one, you don't even have to worry about anything. You'll just hear it click on. Now your lines are attached. Now next, if we didn't, um, haven't already changed your fuel pump once, you'll have to wire in the pigtail. And your pump will come with directions on how to wire it and everything so you'll follow those 
And uh, here's what your pigtail looked like. After you got that pigtail wired on, that one pushes on. This one pushes on. You'll make sure your little locker thing is pushed on there. Give them a little tug, make sure they can't come off. And now we're ready to test our fuel pump. And so, yeah, you'll turn the key to the on without starting it. And you have somebody sit back here with their ear down here and listen for this thing to buzz a little. And, um, and so, here we'll do it. There it is. And y'all heard that. And so that's so. what. You'll do it a couple more times and listen for that buzz each time. You want to prime the system a little bit yeah. since you ran out. So. And get some pressure in there. So you'll do it three or four or five times. And then we'll give her a start up and we'll see if she starts. So there we go. My truck's started and fixed. So there we go. Fuel pump's done. And there you go. And we'll just wrap these connections up in electrical tape. And, uh, you know, make it all neat under here. Probably put it in or like that. You know, around. So it's, your bed will sit down. And there you're done. So, you'll put your bed back down. Put your eight bolts in. Your two wire plugs under there. And, uh, your, uh, fill neck for your gas thing and and put your tailgate on and you're done so pretty simple hardest part is getting this lock ring back on so it may take two people to do that so that's it pretty easy do the hearing aid whatever are you ready to roll kid yeah these okay. four I think we're going to take the night Alright, Phil, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Uh, congratulations on that. That's a good deal. Screwdriver right behind you. Two by four for a hammer. So, two screws, plastic snap rivet, eight bolts, and it's back on. Tailgate next. Um, didn't get to see, but it was in a... Should have put it on there, because it's quite comical for us trying to lower that back down without a hoist. Luckily, uh, in-laws showed up, and we were able to, uh, me and him just lifted it while they unhooked all of our hooks and we just laid it down on there and set it um, so in the future if we ever have to take the bed off again if we have a hoist we'll use a hoist if not we're just going to move it out lay the bed down out there lift it off carry it off put it to the side it was a whole lot easier to just lift and carry than our little contraption here um, but yeah that'd be the easiest just lift it off with a couple buddies and set it to the side do everything, then lift it back on. It's a whole lot easier to line up and everything at that point. Um, and then, uh, there you go. Last final. Hear it clicking and priming right there, so definitely fixed. And uh, he's just checking the lights, make sure that blue wire didn't go to anything, but you won't have to worry about that because you probably don't have a blue wire hanging out. Yep. Alrighty, well. There she is. He's all finished. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions, comments, or whatever. And remember, subscribe, like, thumbs up, and do all that great stuff, and we'll catch you in the next, next video. video.